Following the March 11th earthquake and subsequent tsunami that racked Japan, do you believe that Maui County is adequately prepared to deal with similar di disaster situations? Are there any readiness shortcomings that need to be addressed? Well, I mean, I come from Hana, and you know, we, the, the 1946, April 1st, 1946 tsunami uh, was devastating for Hana. And it wiped out the village that I live in, Hamoa. Um, there were a number of people that died in that tsunami. So we're very attuned to that. And, you know, um, civil defense did a great job. Maui the civil defense, mm -hmm. the state civil defense. But there's always room for improvement. And part of it is, you know, the sirens in the areas, uh, the wind blows up towards the mountains, so they weren't able to hear the sirens. Um, but now that's, you know, we brought that to the attention of civil defense, and they're going to start working on it. And to their credit, they said, okay, we'll go to Hamua on April 1st which is coming up when they do the test, they want to be there to hear it. And I said, okay, but if you come during the day, the wind is blowing another direction. See, so they're, they're responding to this. And, um, you know, I think that we were adequately prepared. Our guys did an excellent job. Mm -hmm. And it also gave us the room to find the areas that we need to fine tune. And, you know, one of the things that I appreciated was so many of the folks that were in Maui's uh, Emergency Operations Center the EOC were tweeting out about what was happening, what would the updates were, and I had a whole list of things because, well, I guess all of us were on Oahu. And yeah, I was home. I was at home. You were, you, were, you were at home, but uh, I was over here and trying to make sure I knew what was happening back uh, in Lahaina uh, because I live in a flood prone area, and so, you know, finding out what happened, did people have to move out, and all of that. Uh, w as well as you know what's happening to the roads, what's happening to South Maui, which is the other part of my district. So I was really appreciative of the, the folks in the EOC taking time to send out to their networks and, and to the rest of us about what was going on. Just a, you know, in terms of some of the things that happened as a result of that, um, I guess we were lucky with two of our small boat harbors in one regard uh, both uh, Ma'alaya and Lahaina, we had repair projects and major uh, work that was getting ready to be done. So even though there was some damage, we've got uh, dollars and, and all in place to take care of most of it. Um, the unfortunate thing, we have this very ugly um, hulk of a vessel stuck on the reef <laughs> in Lahaina, and it survived the tsunami. It's like, why couldn't it have taken that out and maybe not taken out some of the docks? But uh, we'll have to deal with that another time. You know, you bring up a good point, Roz, because in talking with um, state civil defense, they're looking at um, using the newer technologies. For instance, um, texting. They're saying that texting uses very little bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So even though the cell phones may not work, the text will. And so they, they're saying, well, maybe we can get all the, the numbers of people in flood-prone er flood areas and text out to them, you know, because most people have the phone right next to them. So we were talking about using those technologies. Um, for the for areas like Hamoa and areas that are like Lahaina that are, are prone to tsunami. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, I think, you know, we just want to congratulate Civil Defense for, I think, what, what the, for doing a fabulous job. And I think, you know, obviously having the uh, tsunami scare last year probably made us better mm -hmm. prepared. And so hopefully each time, you know, we get a little bit better. Once an event happens or doesn't, then we're able to evaluate, debrief, and make sure that we improve upon some of the areas that need to be improved upon. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. You know, I've had to pack up my house in Hamoa twice <laughs> in, in, in about a year. So, uh, but it really makes you think about what's important. It you know, does. I took family pictures, mm -hmm. important documents, and artifacts, uh, things like my family's boy pounders, and you know, it's sort of walked out of the house and said, "Well, it might not be here when I come back." Well, the other thing too is we had a lot of time to plan yeah. and to execute. I think one of the things I'm hoping that all of the civil defense folks are going to be taking a look at is what if we didn't have that kind of time? You know, what are the things that we need to fine tune and, you know, how do we do uh, the reverse 911 calls, you know, getting people, getting the texts out to folks uh, to ensure that we give people as much time as possible if the next, when the next event comes that maybe is closer by. We've been lucky lately these past oh, yeah. couple of years. Very fortunate. Yeah. Very fortunate. Yeah, and I, you know, our sympathies and, and thoughts go out to the folks in Japan because um, they, they certainly, uh, many in those areas didn't have any time to react. 
and uh, it's, it's going to impact us in ways that I think we're not aware of at, at the moment. Everyone, I think it will affect. Are there any specific improvement projects that in your districts that you'd like to acknowledge? Current or, or new projects? Either a, any kind of projects? Well, you know, one district. of the projects that I'm kind of excited about happening in Central Maui is, you know, num about three years ago when Senator Baker was Ways and Means Chair, we started funding the new Wailuku Elementary School. And so that's just about ready to get underway. So, you know, we anticipate uh, breaking ground within the next month or two. And, uh, you know, looking forward to having classroom time in the next two years. So that's kind of an exciting time. Uh, for some of the folks in Wailuku. So, you know, I think th those are some of the projects. I mean, there are many others that are happening throughout the state, but for, for Central Maui, we're kind of excited about the school. You know, one of the nice things that Governor Abercrombie did right after he was uh, inaugurated was to ask all of us, are there projects in your district that may be funded, but the funds haven't been released? And so he's uh, done an, an important project for uh, a girls softball up at Lahaina Luna. He's, uh, released money for some uh, highway projects uh, in the district that are important as well. So it's, you know, that's another piece of having someone who um, sits in the governor's chair who really wants to work with the legislature and wants to be collaborative and it's going to pay off for all of us. Well, you know, for, for my district, I mean, I have all the islands, you know, Molokai, Lanai, Kaholawe, and then upcountry in East Maui. And, uh, but I, I'm really, I'm really pleased that the, the DOT is interested in working with me on bridge projects, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not a sexy, it's not one <laughs> of these things where they say, well, you want to fix bridges, but, you know, for the rural and remote yeah. areas, uh, the, the bridges important. are about 100 years old, they're starting to, to give way, um, and so we're, we're looking at doing um, some bridge uh, restorations, you know, I mean, not losing the character of the bridges, but making them structurally sound again. and. Uh, you know, I'm really glad to say that the DOT guys get it. You know, when they said we need to look at these in the rural areas, they said, yes, let's start. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, and, and the nice thing about that is in the past when we had uh, bridge projects, everybody was afraid that it was going to be some four-lane structure or something that didn't fit within the character of the area. And so I think what Kalani says is very important. You know, we can assure the public that we're going to make sure we have structurally sound bridges, but they're not going to look like H3. Right. Yeah, one other project that we just got briefed on a, a couple of weeks ago was the airport bypass road. So, you know, that's going to be something that, yeah. you know, Senator English has been working on. And it's, for all those that who travel on Derry Road, you know, at any given time, they know how, <laughs> how messy that place can be, uh, no matter what time of the day it is. And so hopefully we'll get some additional relief sometime soon. So they're already starting, they have the plans all designed, and hopefully just a matter of getting some of the funds and getting bids out there so they can start doing the construction work. So. Yeah, you know, for, for us as a, as a team here, it's, we've actually put a lot in the budget over the last couple of years. So part of it has been to make sure that those monies get released, which is what Governor Abercrombie is talking to us about doing. And then the other part is, you know, to make sure that um, uh, the timing of the projects, because uh, you, if everything gets released at once, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't help with the sustainability of jobs. So we're, we're saying, okay, let's time things so that the jobs are there over the long term. Um, and we're fortunate that, again, we can talk to the departments and they're working with us on this.